May all beings be at peace. May all beings be free of suffering. And may all beings remember who they are. Good morning. You don't realize what a, um, what a blessing this is. Because every time I'm given a topic to talk about, whatever that might happen to be, is that all of my stuff around that particular subject comes right up in my faith. To deal with, to work with, to heal, to stretch, to grow with. And so that, um, see, you all don't get that opportunity as often as I do. So I'm grateful for that. Does it strike you as odd that what you desire the most, what you pray for the most, world peace, inner peace, compassion, forgiveness, non-judgmentalness, that the things we pray for the most we don't have or we don't have too much of? The things we want the most are not here the way we would like them to be here. Isn't that interesting? The only conclusion I can draw from that, for myself anyway, is that somehow or another I am resistant to receiving the gifts that I so desire with my heart. I mean, what other choice is there? Either it's not there or it is. And either I can embrace it or not. See, the only conclusion I can draw for myself is that there's something inside of me that is resistant, that is pushing away. Or maybe even alienating me from the gifts that I want to receive the most from spirit. It could show up in a lot of different forms. It could show up as my not-enoughness, my unworthiness or sense of unworthiness, the idea that it might be too good to be true. Oh, world peace, that's too good to be true. That's a real interesting thing that's happening in some of the books we're studying recently is that one of the things that it talks about in terms of prayer is a missing piece in prayer is, first of all, you have a desire for something, and then you go to the, the source where that desire can be granted, and you pray and you open yourself to that, whether that's divine spirit in my heart or outside my heart, doesn't matter where, well, inside, that's where I believe it exists. But you pray and you pray and you pray and you work on it and you work on it and you work on it and work on it. <coughs> and you're waiting for something to happen. It doesn't always happen. The missing piece is that I need to open myself up to the possibility that this prayer can be answered the way I'm asking it. Is there, is, I, have, I can say, well, I'm praying for world peace, but in the back of my mind, I really don't believe it's possible because it's never happened yet. I've got to be open to the possibility that it can and will. So it could be my unworthiness, my not enoughness, my unopenness to the possibility, my, the weight of my old programming from a lifetime. Any one of those things or a combination of all of that that somehow or another is getting in the way of me being able to receive or take in my highest good. It's not because I'm bad, not because I'm stupid. Not because there's something wrong with me. I'm just not awake. I'm not aware. I mean, how I'm, I've done this before. I've, I've been through, especially when I was working for a living. I'm semi-retired these days. When I was working for a living, I would, Friday afternoon would come along and I'd say, well, you know, I did this and I did this and I did this and I did this and I saw this person and that person. We talked about this and we talked about that. But where was I? I did all these things. Obviously, I did them fairly well. Where was I? I wasn't there. I wasn't present. I was someplace else. If you ever had a conversation with somebody who's, somebody who's thinking of something other than, your, than what you're saying, you know you're not, they're not there. And you can talk to your blue in the face and it's not going to make a connection. And then I have to ask myself, well, how many times have I done that with you? How many times did that happen to me? Then I'm, uh, I'm, li I'm listening, but I'm not. The world is doing something to me. 
something's happening out there that's affecting and something's, something is doing something to me. The way Reverend Ramesi put it last week, Reverend Ramesi, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? I like that. <laughs> got, got a nice ring to it. Uh, keep that in mind. The way she put it was, either God is good or not. That the essence of our being is either unconditional love or it's not. Something else. It seems to me there are three choices we are left with. Either the universe is conspiring against me, or the universe is conspiring for me, or the universe doesn't care. The third one I think we can kind of throw out because that's for my atheistic and agnostic friends and they're probably not here this morning. <laughs> and that's perfectly okay. They're doing something else on Sunday morning. <laughs> it's okay. So we're stuck with two, right? Either, either, either the universe is conspiring for me or against me. It seems obvious what our choice needs to be, or what we can realize is most true, and yet I know the universe is not conspiring against me. But you know, and I know that that's true. I absolutely know that that's true. But you know, sometimes it's difficult for me to believe that. It's like, you know, at the end of our service when we flash that, that prayer up there and we say, we end it by saying, I am divine. I know that that's true. But I don't believe it all the time. Do you? I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying that's part of my own limitation. Something I need to work on. I am divine. Sounds wonderful. Feels wonderful. Looks wonderful. Sounds wonderful. Do I believe it? I know it's true. Do I believe it yet? See, you have to be awake. You have to be aware to be in the flow of life. To be in the flow of life, you have, you have to be aware enough to be able to let go of those things that no longer serve you. Because if you're not aware of them, they're still going to control my life. My life is going to be controlled by external events around me. The spilled cup of coffee, the dent in my car, the, the sausage that got burnt on the stove, whatever it happens to be, it's all going to be stuff that somehow or another somebody or something out there is doing to affect me some ways. In fact, I can even quote that whole idea about insanity. Insanity is doing the same thing, expecting different results, and laugh about that and pat myself on the back and go ahead and do the same thing anyway. So I know what insanity is. Do I believe that it plays a role in my life? I'm going to have to say yes. One of my teachers likes to say, you are the meaning maker of your life. You decide what it means. How often during a day, during a typical day in my life, am I consciously open to the unconditional love that I am? How often during a day in my life, a normal, typical day in my life, am I closed off from that? And I wonder why at the end of a day I'm exhausted or not feeling very good about myself. We've been, taught how, we've been taught to focus on the negative. We've been trained to focus on the negative. Sort of like Satchel Page said, don't look back, it might be gaining on you. Right? That's kind of the whole life script that so many of us have. Don't look back, it might be gaining on you. And the thing about it is, is that we've been so focused on negativity that we look at, rather than, we, we, choose, to, we choose lack without... without Instead of abundance, we choose chaos rather than peacefulness. And even when we come into unity and we get a new script, we get a new libretto for the opera of life, we lose it and go back to the old one again and again and again. And, again. and I'm not saying that is bad or wrong or anything. I'm, I do the same thing. You know, but how many times do I have to remind myself to wake up? Seven times or 70 times seven? You continue to, I, I, my challenge is I need to continue to do that until I stay awake. What makes a Gandhi or a Mother Teresa? Gandhi, when he was dying after he was shot, lying in the arms of one of his followers, didn't say, I've been shot. Oh God, I'm dying. Who was it? Who did it? Or even, I forgive you. 
What he was saying over and over and over again was the name of God. Ram, 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 Ram. Without hesitation. That's where his heart was at. That's where his head was at. That's where his whole being was at. My whole being is in that connection between me and divine spirit. Nothing, absolutely nothing got in the way of that. Not even dying. Not judging, not analyzing, just being. One of my favorite anchors is the St. Francis prayer. Because it's, it's, it's an absolutely wonderful thing. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. That's really nice. But I get to the meat of it. Where there is hatred, let me so love. First of all, I don't like to admit there's hatred in my heart, but there is sometimes. But what it says is it doesn't ignore, what is, it doesn't ignore the bad stuff. It doesn't say, oh, that doesn't exist, or that's just an illusion. It doesn't throw it away. It says, let me take this thing, this, this sadness that I want to convert into joy, or this, this anger that I want to turn into compassion, or this hatred that I want to turn into love. Let me take the negativity that is, in, with, that is within me, that I recognize was in me, excuse me, that I struggle with sometimes. Let me take that and let me allow that to be transformed by divine spirit, both within me and without me. Not to deny it, not to reject it, not to push it away. Some, in other words, I claim the divine power within me to transform whatever is negative, whatever pushes me away, whatever pushes you away from me, that that might be transformed into a higher level of thinking, to a higher level of understanding, to a higher, le- higher vibrational level of being. So that whatever, whatever resistance I have to wholeness, to fullness, to being unconditionally loved might be released. I still experience fear, doubt, shame, and everything else, but I refuse to allow those things to define who I am. I open myself up to see beyond them, to see beyond them, to see the truth of who I am, truth of who you are. There's a marvelous image of that in in the, the martial arts of Aikido. The Aikido master never hits anybody, but he also never gets hit. When something's coming his way, he knows how to move over to the side and go over his shoulder. This way, that way. I bend with the wind. I know how to adapt to situations in life because I know nobody's doing anything to me. I am the meaning maker of my life. If God is for us, who could be against us? I know that that's true. Do I believe it's true? Not all the time. You ever hear this one? If you feel far away from God, who moved? I would like to find whoever invented that saying and strangle him to death. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, okay? That is... Because <laughs> I'm not supposed to say that, right? I'm not supposed to say that. I <laughs> can't say he's, he's going to strangle somebody. You can't say that. Give somebody else the microphone. That is the most ridiculous statement that I have ever heard. First of all, God doesn't move. And secondly, how you feel, how I feel, has absolutely nothing to do with how close God is to my life. Sometimes in my times of of greatest despair or horrible pain or hurtfulness is when God's closest to me, when I don't feel it. So it's absolutely ridiculous, but this is a form, this is where some of my resistance and some of my confusion comes from, when I start thinking that my emotional state defines my spiritual state. And they are two very, very different things. I can feel lousy emotionally. Can you imagine what it would be like if the only time we loved somebody was if we felt like loving them? Oh, I don't feel like loving you today. Well, so I don't know about you, but there have been days in my life like that. I'm sure there have been some like that in you. Did that mean you can't love? Did that mean you don't? I mean, those of us who had kids or grandkids, there would probably been time when we wanted to throw them out the window. I don't feel like loving you. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't feel like loving you. But does that mean that I stopped? Of course not. I can't not. 
So please, in our, in our resistance, in our growth, in our, in, our, in our stretching of ourselves, please don't confuse your feelings, your feeling sense with the truth of who you are and what you do and how you love and how you are loved. A friend of mine a while ago asked me, how are you doing? And I said, I'm a mess. She said, no, you're not a mess. You feel like a mess. I said, oh. She, I forgot and she got it right away. You feel, what you feel is, is true. I'm not saying that, I'm not throwing that away and saying it doesn't exist, but it's not who you are. And it doesn't take anything, it can't possibly take anything away from your, your essence. Resistance comes from the confusion of how I feel. How I feel is not who I am. Who moved? God doesn't move. No matter how you feel, no matter what's going on in your life, inside or outside, you are unconditionally loved. Some of us hold on to our resistance because we don't like change. Or we're afraid of... We, want, we, would, we would rather choose the painful familiar with the risky, painless future. Please don't confuse this one either. If you've ever made a change in your life, especially a spiritual change, you're going to go through a period of awkwardness. It's going to feel strange for a while. It's going to feel funny. It's going to feel different. It's going to feel odd. It's, uh, in some ways, it's not going to feel right because it doesn't feel the same way it did when you didn't do it. Please don't confuse those two. We all go through awkward whenever we make any kind of change in our lives, especially a deep spiritual change. But awkwardness is just awkwardness. Learning how to walk, learning how to speak, learning how to ride a bicycle, learning anything new. It's amazing we allow ourselves to do that with other physical world tasks. When it comes to something in the spiritual world, we think we should get it right away. We should get it at once. should be a one-shot deal. It's not. I have no idea about what's going to happen next. Thomas Merton expressed that so well in his marvelous prayer. I'd like to say the whole thing for you right now because it, it, it opens my soul. And coming from a mystic, coming from somebody who is heaped in sanctity and holiness or whatever you want to call it, this sense of, of, of both doubt and questioning, fearfulness and faith. My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. God, God. Neither, do, neither do I. I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I have that desire in everything that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost, and in the shadow of death I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. What would it be like, as Ramisi reminded us again last week, what would it be like if I embraced this present moment as being full of infinite possibilities, full of wonder rather than disasters? What would that be like? How many times in my life have I realized that what appeared to be a tragedy or a disaster was really a wonderful blessing? How many times have I looked, how many times have I missed the answer to a prayer because I was looking over here and it was happening over here? How many times have I prayed with a preconceived notion of what the answer is supposed to look like and so I'm looking over here and it's happening over here? I could go on to this forever, but 
I'm not going to. Let me share one last story with you. My father was dying in a hospital in Upper New York State. My mother and I were up there in the ICU waiting room. We were both smokers at the time, so we used to give one another a break. One would go, one would go outside and have a cigarette and a cup of coffee and come back. I happened to be there alone by myself for a while. And all of a sudden, the door opens to the waiting room, and this little girl comes in wheeling a wheelchair, and there's a little stuffed animal in the wheelchair. It looked like a teddy bear or something. Now, I am such a, an introvert that I would have probably stuck my nose in a magazine and present, pretended, let me just pretend she's not there and maybe she'll leave. But for some reason, I think for a God-given reason, I didn't do that. I looked up from my magazine, my two-month-old or two-year-old lady's home journal or whatever it was I was reading at the time, put it down, and I said, Hi, what's your name? She said, My name is Missy. And I, I, she, you could tell she had a cleft palate. I'm not sure whether that's why she was in the hospital or not, but... You know, so she said it in her cleft palate, nice kind of way. And I said, you know, I asked her to tell me about her little teddy bear, and she started talking about her teddy bear. And we had a nice little conversation going. And then my mom came in, who just loved kids. And they struck up a conversation about teddy bears and dolls and dresses and things. She made my day. She was this, this absolute ray of sunshine. I came into this one of the saddest days in my life. And I remember that story so often, so many times, because I wonder how many of those moments are happening to me right now that I'm missing. How many missies are showing up in my life that I've forgotten or missed because I'm looking over here for something and it's happening over here. Nobody's doing anything to me. What would it be like if I were totally unresistant to the unconditional love of God? What would I be like? What would the world be like? What would my house be like? What would my family be like? Divine Spirit, let me be open to the movement of grace in my life, the movement of peace, the movement of compassion, the movement of love, the movement of joy. May I truly be an instrument of your peace, and may I see all other beings as being an instrument of your peace as well. May all beings be at peace. May all beings be free of suffering. May all beings remember who they are. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day.